Hello guys, in this short little how-to we're going to build a custom kernel on Debian, same goes for Ubuntu, the so-called Debian way. The first thing we're going to make sure we're SSH'd into our machine, you can see I have a Debian 12 VM running here, nothing special, not much customization, just sudo installed and basically that's it and all the dependencies. So since I'm SSH'd into the machine, we are going to first of all install all the dependencies. As you can see, we have the build essentials meta package, which contains, for example, a compiler, the Linux source archive. This holds the kernel sources for the kernel 6.1, which Debian currently runs, and some additional utilities to make the kernel build go. As you can tell, I've already installed that. So the next thing on the list is we need to unpack the archives. To do that, we're going to use tar, navigate to the source directory where the sources are stored. And you can see here Linux source 6.1. Oh, whoops. Linux source 6.1. And we need to give it a destination folder. And I created an empty folder called build. So let's extract that. Oh. We don't have the folder. Let's quickly fix that and rerun the command. Make sure the destination folder is actually created. The minus capital C means extract to that directory. And if we're going to take a look right now, there it is. And there we have the Linux sources. The next step on the list is we need to go into the source directory. So build Linux source and make a Mr. Proper to clean the kernel sources. This only takes a couple of seconds. It shouldn't take that long, depending on what machine you have and how fast your machine is. But this was pretty easy. The next step, since we're currently running kernel 6.1, is we're going to take the current configuration of the kernel and save it in the build directory so that we can work off that. To do that, we do a CP, and the current kernel configuration can be found under boot 6.3. We can see here, since we are running 6.1.0.31, we're going to choose 31, and we're going to save that as .config. So now we have the current configuration saved in our directory. Here it is, and we can advanced to actually configure the kernel. To do that, you type make and config. To have a cursor space menu, this takes a couple of seconds for the configuration to start. And in here we can all we can do all the customizations we want. But be warned, the same thing we did in FreeBSD since we're now building a kernel in Linux or on Debian the Linux kernel, be careful with what you're setting here. So don't just willy nilly uh, take off options or disable things that you might not know what they're doing. Be careful with that because you could have an unbootable system. Thankfully, there's more than one kernel installed, so you can still boot into the old kernel, but be warned. The only thing I'm going to do here is I will append the local version and I will call that JHX. Be careful here that you specify actually a separator. I select the minus so that the name gets appended to the kernel. There we go. We can go out of that. And one last configuration tweak I do. I will select the processor family since I have a Core 2 newer Xeon AI7 system, currently an Intel system. I will select that. That's good. After that, hit F6 to save, save the configuration. OK, and we can exit now. The next step on the list is we need to actually build the kernel. For that, we're going to leverage make minus J. In my machine, I have currently eight cores set aside for the virtual machine. So I'm going to select eight, select what's best fitting for you or how many cores you have or how many you want and do a make j-8 bindep package. The bindep package make target actually makes Debian packages out of the headers and the kernel so that you can easily install them. And if we hit enter, 
the whole build process is going to start. So I will pause the video and I will come back once this is finished. During kernel compilation I found out there is an error. It says error Debian rules binary subprocess return exit status 2. To fix that we actually need to set the trusted keys to a empty value. So simply running that command will fix that. And we can continue our build process from there. So I will stop the video and come back once this is finished. A little extra on that, in the Debian wiki it actually talks about when you get an error that you have to set or use the script config command to set the signing key or simply to disable it. I will link the Debian wiki page in the video description. So once again we wait till this is finished. So the kernel compilation is finished and the packages are created. One little thing to note, I on purpose don't edit out errors because I think personally the best learning process is having errors. So I had that error about module signing so I informed you about this little command we could do and I think it's beneficial to also show problems in videos since not everything always works according to plan. For the most part, you know, there's little problems, errors, and simply things that can go wrong. So think about that. If you have an error about module signing, simply set the trusted keys to a zero value, and after that you are golden. So the next step on the list is, we need to make sure we actually have built the Debian packages. So in here we are in the source directory, we put one directory above, we can tell Okay, we have the headers, the image, the libc package, we have all the packages we need. What we want to do right now, since we want to use our newly created kernel, is install all the dev packages. You can simply do it like this, giving apt the install command and do a file glob and dot dev packages. So every package will get installed, this will take a couple of seconds, not very long. And after that, we can go over to rebooting the system and check out if our new kernel indeed works. So I will pause this for a second. Another little thing to note is since we're installing dev packages, these will actually take care of running uh, the grub config again so that our newly kernel is selectable and it takes care of all the preliminary settings that you need to have to install the kernel itself. So as we can see, our new kernel is installed. We can tell from here under boot VM Linux 6.1.128 JHX. And the last thing we actually want to do is we want to reboot the machine. So let's go out of here <coughs> and open our virtual console. Let me log in and we simply do a reboot. And what you see right here now, you have the grub boot screen, but you don't immediately see if your newly created kernel is booted first. You can go to advanced options and you can tell the first selection is our JJX kernel and we just boot it. And let's see if everything has worked. And yes, indeed it has. We are running our newly created kernel and everything is fine and worked well. So I hope this little video helps someone who wants to build a custom kernel and wishing every one of you a good day and enjoy. Bye.